and uh, Congressman Sablon, you're now recognized for five minutes of questions. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair uh, and General Berkman for holding this hearing. Uh, Madam Chair, I think um, in, our, in your next hearing, subcommittee hearing that you call, I will just join you in your office right across the hall from where I am. Um, but um, let me uh, let me ask a uh, welcome to our witnesses, and I do uh, acknowledge that DA has some really good doctors and, and health providers and. Uh, and I'm envious because in my district, there are no VA facilities, uh, no VA doctors. So my veterans must go to a fee-based doctor contracted by the VA. So um, let me ask the VA, our VA witnesses, uh, Dr. Cox or others, um, how does the VA ensure that the safety of my veteran constituents when they receive care outside of a VA run facility. Well, thank you, Congressman. Let me attempt to uh, address your question. It's really about what we call community care, a right? care that veterans receive not from within the VA system, but from community providers that are under contract. And as you know, that program has grown tremendously just in the last few years. Uh, and we now have, uh, in the last couple of years, established relationships with with contractors in each region of the country, including yours. Um, within those contractual agreements, there are requirements that the uh, provider network, the, the community care network must meet regarding safety of care and quality of care. And the, and the VA Office of Community Care monitors those requirements very closely. Uh, each of the uh, providers has a clinical quality management committee meeting that we participate in. And that's our opportunity to provide oversight to make sure that they're meeting those standards. And I agree with you that there's opportunity for us to strengthen the quality and safety stipulations in our contracts with community care network providers. Uh, and we intend to do that as we enter into the next round of contracts. All right. Yeah, well, uh, thank you. So uh, again, my next question is, um, and I think you answered my next question about what be, but um, let me, let me get a grasp of this. So how large are the fee-based clinics that the VA presently has? How, uh, how, how large is it? We have a very significant uh, footprint in the community. Um, and uh, much of this is uh, due to the Mission Act uh, as we have given veterans the opportunity if the wait times are too yeah. long uh, to be able to go yeah. out there so it is uh extremely significant it, how many it, it, how many contracts do you have how many clinics are, are contract fee based yeah i will have to get back to you on the actual number okay. of clinics. all right i appreciate it because you know um and and so again and i think um dr cox answered my question to some extent but let me go ask now uh dr Kroviak, I hope I get that right, and Ms. Silas, um, the Inspect IG and the GAO, um, has either office, either the Inspector General or the government or the GAO ever performed similar reviews of fee-based contracted healthcare clinics um, throughout the country as you have done for uh, VA, um, VA clinics, medical centers that so far so i'll answer that we have done work on specific care encounters where quality was questioned and in some cases those were contracted providers that we were reporting on and and um are those information uh, available uh that we could so these these were published reports um, oh, all right it was a care encounter and you know we'll go wherever the record leads us to whichever providers have participated in the care to understand that patient's um, health care journey in the system and in care that's paid for by the system yeah doctor uh, all right so um, i hope i'm not imposing if you could please share that published report with with uh, this delegate's uh, office thank you yes absolutely all right thank you very much madam chair again um no, thank you for this is really an important hearing uh, and this oversight of we're, we're oversight the subcommittee's oversight of people who are 
over providing oversight themselves uh you know leads us to a different label and um and um again the va does provide great service for many but there are still things and matters that they uh, they could improve on and we should be there to help them carry it out and thank you everyone for for being here and joining us today and providing us important information have a good day i yield back madam chair uh, thank you, Congressman. And, and I, if it makes you feel any better, my my veterans in my district receive care from contracted physicians. Yeah. Right. So I think we were, you know, mixing apples and oranges a little bit because there's contracted physicians that give health provide health care, and then there's the community health care system. Um, and so, you know, we got to be clear that we're talking, you know, to. Yeah. to my, my 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 feet my, my the clinic that provides the veterans that, that has done so for the past 10 11 years i think um her practice is now solo she's one doctor she has her own patients she has v veterans and um you know grand god good thing that uh, the va provided her with the lpn i think uh yeah lpn or uh and uh that's helping out the veterans, but I'm concerned about the overload. Uh, and but thank you again. Uh, I'm over way over my time. Uh, I'll bring you something right across the hallway. Uh, uh, a food from made from home. You are always a bearer of wonderful gifts, uh, Mr. Sablon. So thank you for that. Um, I now recognize uh, Congresswoman Miller Meeks for five minutes.